Live from the Rob Christensen Radio Network Satellite Studio, it's Jim and Rob over Analyze the Movie. Oh, you're here. Anyway, um, <laughs> hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm Rob Christensen, uh, co-host of Jim and Rob over Analyze Movies. Tonight, we're going to be looking at a... Uh, want to be a want to be a potential brand new Christmas classic, Fat Man, starting Mel Gibson and Walton Scoggins, and a wonderful turn by Marianne Jean Baptiste. Uh, anyway, uh, enough of that. Before I get into the ideological ingredients, let's uh, let's let's take a look at the trailer. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I've lost my influence. Maybe it's time I retired the cult. You still have it. Lost some kids with a deer rifle. Put two holes in the sleigh, one in me. There is a rising number of our youth making poor decisions. You just messed up! Chris, the United States military would like to procure your services. This is a one-time deal, gentlemen. We are fulfilling a two-month contract with the U.S. military. Captain Jacobs will fill you in on a lot of the changes that are going on around here. Now for your safety, we will be upgrading the site's security. Do you have any questions? Yes. What kind of toys are we making, sir? Not toys, miss. What's the job? I'd like you to kill Santa Claus. <laughs> What's the purpose of your visit? Recreation. Hunting. I'm gonna kill some things. Your workers sure have healthy appetites. That's why elves live much longer than humans. And Chris? He does the same? No. It's a giving that keeps him young. I've come for your head, fat man! You think you're the first? You think I got this job because I'm fat and jolly? You have fun shooting the trash. Yes, ma'am. I'll make cookies. Well, that's Donner. He gets a mite nippy. Lucky it wasn't Blitzer. Should tear your package right off. So much promise. So much promise. Anyway, uh, what's next? Yes, our ideological ingredients. Uh, the Bechdel test. Does it pass? No. No, no. Um, would it get a reframe stamp? Don't believe so. Uh any class analysis or class consciousness? No. <laughs> Any class analysis? This is not the movie you're looking for if you're looking for that. <laughs> uh, anyway, with that in mind, I just want to, uh, I think it's now time to uh, to introduce my co-host, bring him into, uh, into, the, uh, into the show. Uh, my 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 co-host uh the gritty reboot mr jim chamoyko ah! hey all I, you've gone all in with the uh with the background and the sweater and the toque <laughs> totally baby i uh i borrowed this shirt off mel uh i got my henley on and i i got the you know the lumberjack shirt from mel and i got an angel over here oh i had the right hand this time <laughs> awesome That's it. That's the, that was the, my dash into the basement five minutes ago <laughs> to find something to uh, uh, put up. That was Christmassy, but uh, anyhow. One of the great things about a, 
you know, about a green screen. <laughs> just, just <laughs> dial up what? an appropriate background. That's a green screen? <laughs> Smart ass. All right. Well, listen, Jim, before uh, before we get started, before we start taking a hard mm-hmm. look, we've got got a number of folks uh, watching and in already uh, chiming in in the chat. Why don't we say hello to everyone? Uh, first of all, let's get a big wave for Shashank. Yay. <laughs> this is uh, real. I even got a hole in the elbow. Anyway. It's <laughs> perfect. Um, all right. Who who else we got? Oh, look at this. Mr. Eric Thorpe. Yeah, hey, Toronto. <laughs> Toronto's represented. The six uh, in the house. <laughs> Big T.O. All right. Uh, and who apparently only found out it was about Santa Claus when he read the log line, which is kind of awesome. Can't wait to hear what he thinks. And then a friend from uh, f- from the upside, the upside Dan. Yay. Everybody gets a wave. No audience sound effects, though, because that is not playing out on my little player thing. So. All right. Uh, so yeah, we've got uh, the the chat is pretty active. Oh, and another and a new friend, kind of uh-huh. an old friend, but a new friend lost in the real. Uh, the, definitely, apparently, this went under his radar. But first of all, let's say hello. Woo! Woo! <laughs> welcome to the show and welcome to the chat, my friend. L-I-T-R. All right, we <laughs> are. Uh, we will now. Uh, now let's uh yeah let's get into it man. Jim, what yeah. did you think? <laughs> so much promise. That's my Twitter handle. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> it's my DJ name. Uh, we don't need another hero, Rob. Uh, no, it's uh, yeah, you know, and and I just was looking at some of the comments here, and and Dan uh, had said uh, something to the effect that. Uh, uh, that it didn't live up to the the plot slash trailer. Um, the trailer made it sort of look really bonkers. There were some tonal issues, I think, with this uh, this movie. I wanted it uh, personally uh, to be just batshit crazy. Excuse my language, and that's how it sort of came across in that t- you know two minute trailer. Uh, I don't think it quite achieved that. It was more uh, interested in the. It, it was almost two movies. It was a bit of a kind of a mm-hmm. crazy premise and then the movie itself was about the mechanics of the story itself you know getting the hitman to uh you know eventually uh go up against uh, santa claus himself so uh yeah two different movies tonally kind of weird uh I-, I didn't mind it the performances were pretty great i don't know how you feel about uh or how anybody feels about mel gibson these days but he was you know he was totally, I think, present and totally game for it. Uh, he looked weathered enough to be in the role. All the the leads, I thought, were solid. Uh, yeah, but uh, it just seemed to be two or three different movies. I, you know what, Jim, I couldn't agree with you more. I even think there was there, it, and I even think there was even more movie left out. Mm-hmm. Um, because when I started to think about, oh, you could have gotten rid of that. Oh, I bet you there was more and it was killing the movie because they hadn't made a choice on what movie they were making. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, one more uh, shout out. Look at this. Richard and Katie, welcome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, two movies or is it two movies or they just couldn't make a call at, do they go bonkers? Do they go full on Mad Max and and yeah. not uh, not like not just as a reference to Mel Gibson in this yeah. movie and in his and the way he played the role, but also just like, well, pick one. You can have a crazy. Well, what the heck, Mad Max and Christmas, you yeah. know? Um, or no, we're gonna have we're gonna tease you, but we're really making a a family friendly kind of or a a PG. Yeah, you know, a PG version of uh, of uh, of a movie, and it's like it, they they couldn't make up their minds. So at times, it's like, oh, this is, ooh, I wonder what Katie will think of that, and I'm sure she'll chime in on that yeah. on the moment I'm thinking of <laughs> later in the chat. Yeah. What? Um... <laughs> Another child in danger. 
<laughs> we pick him. <laughs> we, we certainly can. Um, what I, I agree with you. I do think though, everyone, um, I, Mel Gibson was great, Like mm. he really did deliver. Like oh, yeah. the guy was the, the guy committed. Um, I believed his weariness. I believed his strength. I believed, uh, you know, that he had some sort of, you know, supernatural powers. They didn't really play up, you know, he can yeah. be shot and that's okay. <laughs> you know, but, uh, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was, uh, he, he was great. Anyway, go on. Sorry. Yeah. No. Well, what else, who else, uh, like, well, I, mean, well, I mean, really you had three killer actors and yeah, then a oh, lot yeah. of, well, Canadian, a lot of great Canadian. Hey, I've seen them in insert Hallmark movie of the week here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but yeah. what about Marianne G. Baptiste? What about, yeah. uh, Former uh, Oscar uh, nominee, I believe, for Best Supporting Actress uh, a few years ago for for uh, the Mike Lee movie, whose name is currently evading me. But uh, and then Walton Goggins, he was uh, he was the the antagonist in the the series Justified, opposite Timothy Oliphant for all those years. If you're not familiar with that, um, he plays a little more. Uh, he plays it a little less flaky, a little more professional. And he's mm -hmm. as a hitman, he's got his act together. Yeah. And and he, I think, was the closest to delivering that batshit crazy energy. You know, uh, just certain shots and 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 certain things that they had him do. There was one shot when he's getting dressed and he's putting on a turtleneck and his hair is all over the place. And you know, it's that kind of thing that I think they were. Uh, I think they were counting on him for that nutty energy because. Uh, you know, Mel Gibson sort of the the weary heart of the movie, but um, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I uh, uh, and then Mary uh, Baptiste is uh, uh, she was solid. You know, they gave her stuff to do. Um, I wasn't sure if she was shot in the back at the end and sort of got up. And, you know, she was rubbed some dirt into it, so maybe she's uh, she's uh, uh, magical to some some way. Those are she not... was because he he was following her yeah. blood. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 And those are not small caliber weapons that he had. So, uh, um, and we do have, you know what, speaking of which we should, some folks who don't, uh, if we do have some new folks in the chat. Uh, please know folks we are in, oh no, tell me I deleted it. I mm -mm. couldn't, uh, cause we're in the spoiler zone. You I are this. in the spoiler zone. <laughs> it's like, it. there you go. With the, every scene is, it's <laughs> Every scene will be revealed. Yes. Um, well, maybe not everyone, but you know. Um, well, what? Uh, yeah, I, I, I do think she was. But what did you think of her performance? I the first thing I thought, Jim, when I saw her, it's like, and this is not a knock on those character actors who do play that role. But mm. I was like, when I saw her, uh, I was like, oh great, it's not going to be sassy black woman, you know she doesn't play those that's yeah. not and again this is not a knock on those african-american Amer actors who play that because you, you're an actor and you gotta work yeah. you know i'm not uh but i was it's like you see her you know i'm not gonna get that and i don't want that in this yeah. you know so i i was really appreciative of that i even liked the way i mean it's well we'll get into the is it worth your time or not later? But yeah. I, I was, I thought the way their relationship played, it was mm -hmm. like, it was really refreshing to see as well. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple of like, and actually a, 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 a really nice, heartful take on a marriage as well. Like I, I, yeah. I was buying it. What, what, what were you, was anyone else in the chat? Like, yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Dan, Dan just chimed in about it, but uh, the, uh, yeah, I, 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 it handled the, well, their particular vicissitudes. It handled that kind of, you know, the ups and downs of marriage, uh, I thought, nicely. And and mm -hmm. they didn't have to, you know. And at one, I think no. two-thirds of the way through the movie, he sort of apologizes to her and says, I've been a little self-involved lately. Uh, you In know, a real way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and so this is the, this is this, you know, I, maybe the screenplay writer didn't talk to the director or maybe the director didn't talk to the screenplay writer, but you know, there's, there's a real genuine sort of earnest movie in this weirdo premise. 
uh, and uh, and that that sort of is you know that's and they couldn't quite pull it off an issue uh, yeah but here. uh yeah here why don't we you know what we got a lot going on in the chat so yeah. why don't we bring some of this up before we get too deep into it in case uh somebody's already brought up a subject uh okay so um Hello, hello, hey. Uh, you know what? Love it when everyone's talking with each, engaging with each other. That's wonderful yeah, to see. Yeah, super cool. Uh, okay. Um, all right. First, uh, Eric, though, didn't plan on watching this movie, but now that I know it's a Christmas movie and it's Christmas time, what the hell? Eric? Well, stick around. <laughs> well, duh. You know, uh, it is though. It's it's got that Christmas heart. Like in a way, though, it's it's about Santa. Santa's lost the Christmas spirit in this one. How does he find it? Apparently, a lot of bloods involved. <clears throat> um, okay, Shashank. He also hasn't seen this movie yet. Shashank. Given where you're coming from, as a critic, as a media studies guy. Um, yeah, I, I I do recommend you see it. There's a there's enough here to talk about, you know. Um, would you agree with me on that, Jim? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's. Okay. it's... All right. Uh, the upside, Dan liked it enough, but didn't feel like it lived up to its plot slash trailer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Lost in the rail. This one definitely went under my radar. Just so you know, both the Upside Dan, Shashank, Lost in the Real, fellow film YouTube critic types, go check them out. Uh, again, partly just to get that varied ex uh, exposure, plus everyone's got their own kind of take and their own kind of films they like to watch. So definitely uh, uh, check out their channels. Okay, uh, definitely went under radar. Looking forward to hearing what we think. Oh, and we're providing that. <laughs> Um, uh, okay. And well, that's a great comment. We'll watch anything with Walton Goggins mm -hmm. and Jim, you would, sounds like you'd agree. You'd agree. Yeah. Walton, Walton delivers. Yeah. Yeah. He's in, he's in the current, uh, uh, show. He's the star of a show called the unicorn, uh, which is about a good looking guy who's dating in his forties or something like that. I don't know. My wife always rolls her eyes when it, when the ad comes on the TV though. So, <laughs> but, but aside from that, yeah, I, I, he's, he's pretty watchable. Oh, look at this. Guess who's, guess who's here. Hey, Jelly Duck, Ahmed. <laughs> good to see you. We have now, we are going around the globe. We got Chennai, India. We've got Kuwait, Kuwait city. Um, uh, is this fat man instead of Batman? <laughs> Always with the pithy one liner. Awesome. <laughs> um, uh, with the pithy take, uh, yes, it is fat man. <laughs> um, and then Eric is, he's think he's okay with fat man being spoiled. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, okay. Uh, upside Dan liked her. Assuming we're talking about Marianne Jean Baptiste. Yeah. And I believe, and I didn't look, I didn't have time, Jim, to look up the woman who played the bartender, Alice. Mm -hmm. Or Lucy. Uh, yeah. One of those uh, Bart Hendricks but names. But I recognize her. I think she's a, an indigenous Canadian actor, yeah. which was kind of nice to see. Uh, but it upside the Upside Dan says, I liked her, and I like that they cast a black actress as Mrs. Claus because it's different. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It was, and it felt, it felt real. Like, and again, not a sassy black, you know, sassy black friend. Um, wasn't, they weren't going there in the film. Um, Shashank, <laughs> I would be seeing the movie later, so I'm all right with getting it spoiled. Yeah, Shashank, you're not new here. <laughs> you know what we do. You know what our MO is. Okay, the upside, Dan. Uh, I did think the relationship scenes were handled well. Better than expected for this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's such a strange... <laughs> it's just yeah, these weird mixes of no, I know. wow sweetness and um okay uh all right vlad 65 welcome welcome back vlad uh good to see you here <laughs> everybody gets a wave all right all the way from russia <laughs> well you have the name like vlad or transylvania yes um Ups and downs of marriage. That's what I want to get out of a kill Santa genre. Well, picture. yeah, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> such a 
It just sure makes sense, though, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> of course you would get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you're absolutely right, Jim. Yeah, it's it's just such a weird... But I liked that there, and I think that could have been brought in. Yeah. You know? Um, okay. Uh, also, like that it felt more realistic, just not showing the magic reindeer flying. Uh, but at the same time, <laughs> I wish we did see more magic. If that makes sense, what do you what do you think on that, Jim? No, I think I, he's kind of getting where he's going, but yeah, um, I mean that's that's something I try to avoid is walk. You know, I, I let I know it's tricky sometimes where you have to sort of make one judgment or the other, but uh, I mean I was okay with it. That you know you, they tend to overdo it, and that then it they was get implied. all the, they get the jingly music in, and there's usually some you know, scene of wonder where you're like, oh, they're yeah. taking off. And how many times have they done this really? Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, and, and you know, he was working on it. I'm so sorry. Of, I forgot about the jingly music. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, just in so many movies, it's sort of, you know, it, especially this time of year, you become aware how, how fetishized the season is, you know, when you see the commercials for the Hallmark movies and things like yep. that, and everyone's drinking hot chocolate and the, I mean, just all the little details are a little bit sort of drive me a little bonkers, but I, I, I was yeah, you're okay. Right. There was no, I can, no standard iconography yeah. there. Well, hold on. There, there was a little bit, you know, it, I'm calling myself the gritty reboot today, and this this was a gritty reboot. They sort of rebooted everything except for the elves. I, I, I felt like they're still it was almost out of elf. They were still eating sugary snacks, and they're you know as as an entree in the cafeteria, and they were all still little people, and they and mm -hmm. and kind of oppressed really. Like oh, we can work 24 hours with just 20 minute naps, and I just thought. What hellish existence is this? And they're gray. They're gray. And it's the military guys going, you need at least six hours of sleep. You need this. You need yeah. Your four food groups. So that was that was about the only element that they didn't reboot. Uh, I thought the elf that played number seven. Yeah. Actually, probably a Canadian actor. I have the IMDb page up somewhere. But uh, I thought they gave him a lot to do which was uh, nice to see. All the uh, American Army guys seemed to be old Canadian actors, which I didn't quite understand. I did. I was... You well, you know, the... my bias is always going towards budget, eh? Yeah. Like, And you yeah. see some of the weaknesses of budget, and mm -hmm. it started to look like a budget American shot in Canada yeah. movie of the week. And it I thought that was right there. It was like, ooh. Shot in the Ottawa Valley, apparently, uh, under... And it looked cool, too. That was the other nice thing. When, at the end, with the big uh, battle, there was yeah. smoke. And, and and not just, you know, when it gets really cold, for those who, say, live in a tropical climate, when it gets really cold, things that normally smoke, smoke even more. So there was, mm -hmm. there was like, steam coming off his, his rifle and, and things like yeah. that. And yeah. I thought that was... Well, you that saw was, the roof cool. of that big boat he drove, that big Plymouth. Yeah. And the the snow, whatever snow was landing on it, was melting right away because yeah. that thing must have been running for yeah. you know, hours. Yeah. But it was a good effect, and and also too, your your uh, when you get so cold again, for those who don't mm -hmm. know, it, it affects your facial muscles. So sometimes it's a little hard to talk, and you can always tell when someone's when, when they're getting cold when they're in an actual cold environment. Yeah. So they, you're starting you know, to do yeah. this. A little bit, yeah, and 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 uh, it just, yeah, just a little bit. The face yeah. looks a little bit different. Anyway, yeah. uh, um, but I with the with certain other things were pared down. Like this, they didn't really concentrate on the sleigh too much. They showed him working on it, and I even like that sort of that leather, the red leather jacket was sort of a, a yeah. neat little. The, the production design of this this was, I felt pretty good. Like there was a lot of neat little touches, and everything looked yeah. lived in. Uh, it didn't look like sets necessarily, you know, and, uh, yeah. 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 Um, what, I want to go back to the magic part that the upside before we, we got some other comments coming in hot and fast. Um, I'm, when, when I thought about magic in this and, and I, you know, I agree with you 90%, Jim, it was kind of nice to have it hinted at, not shoved in her face yeah. and that we didn't see him ride off was great mm -hmm. you know like he was just a 
like just some crusty old farmer, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, what I do think they could have done, and I'm kind of curious what everyone in the chat thinks as well, especially you. Uh, one of the things is missing that I really think it was was like, oh, it has to be money, or maybe I got cut because it was so budget it looked lame. Was like, I mean, to say this big military buildup and oh, you're going to be doing printed circuit boards. Who cares what it's for? I was expecting a reveal. I was okay. expecting some crazy military reveal. Weapon or like something, some, yeah. You know, something either that we're going to be horrified by or kind of, oh, okay, that's pretty cool, or or both. You know, yeah. like some reveal. And, and not that military hardware is magical, but it could bring that kind of, that spectacle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, but going back to now, now I'll talk on the other side of my mouth briefly. Um, what I did think the most magic we saw was, and even the two guys who had no purpose to serve except to be so that they could set up a reindeer joke, but the ability of Santa, everybody looks at you. Hello, Christopher. Had a couple of rough years. He was touch and go there for a couple of years, and the way he'd, you know the other guy, he's like, "Ooh, they," like it was a, uh, it was like they were ripping off a piece out of Raiders of the Lost Ark, and the other guys, yeah. "Ooh, they warned us about that," <laughs> you know, like that, just that. I thought that kind of brought a, a cool magic that I don't think anyone's ever. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. I'm sure it's been done in other Santa movies, but not in that. Not creepy, but weird. Like, yeah. you know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, yeah, I mean, there was there was a lot going on. He did seem to be unconcerned about being shot as well, which I think is sort of like, you know, some... It, it's, and he did get... As he says, they heal like, well, like last time. Yeah. Like what they always do. And then, and then he, got, he got plugged in the head and that, you know, survived that. I mean, yeah. that... that uh, Obviously, something's going on. His wife wasn't crying. Yeah, no. (laughs) He's like, oh, another mess. (laughs) Yeah. Thank God you bled on the snow. You know. How much more am I going to knit? Okay, here we've got to let's catch up on some of these things. Uh, Shashank earlier was uh, global appeal for the show. (laughs) Absolutely, sir. Yeah. Okay. Vlad. Oh, okay. This is an interesting uh, comment. So it's Mad TV's classic raging Rudolph Scorsese basket parody with a heart. I'm going to write yeah. that down. They did a really great <laughs> Mad TV for, for those of you who may not have seen it years, probably 20 years ago. They did a great um, uh, Terminator comes back to save Jesus. So Jesus doesn't get crucified. And and so Terminator's starting to trying to it was an Easter thing, obviously. Terminator's trying to save Jesus, and Jesus going, No, no, this has to happen. It will not happen on my watch. It was just you have to watch it. It's on YouTube. It's great. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, that's and you know what, Jim, if uh you flip me the link, I'll make sure it goes into the uh sure. description and maybe a card at uh this point. Let's, let's make up. So I'll see that little spike yeah. in the uh, in the uh, uh, in the in when I'm scrolling through in the edit suite. Okay, um, what on this on this Vlad? You know, and I don't know about you, Jim. Everyone else in the chat. One of the things at the end, I was kind of like, you know, it has so much promise, and there really was some really great little moments in the movie. But I was I, in the end, I was like, ah, future Futurama and the first couple of Xmas gags they did did it better you know kind of went after all that stuff had this maniacal santa Mm -hmm. you know and and i was it was like this could have been so much more uh but Mm -hmm. yeah you you were reacting yeah yeah no i agree you know i hadn't even thought of that and and i was trying to think of different depictions of santa and and i i guess i haven't watched futurama in a while but the kwanzaa bot and the whole you know and and even just the sort of and now that's that sort of demented batshit crazy energy that i i was sort of expecting from that not not you know a cartoon's well, still managing to have a weird futurama heart 
Yeah, yeah. You know, so no, and, I, I think they're kind of going for something yeah, here, but yeah, like just know. just the insane Santa murderous Santa Claus, which you know <laughs> probably a little too far, but you know I I thought it was hilarious. Uh, yeah. you, you get a tone you got to watch out for because I at the start when the girl had beaten the 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 antagonist, yeah, uh, at the at the science fair. Um, I I thought really you're gonna kill the parents you're gonna you're you're gonna torture the Is girl that what you're like doing? yeah I, that that sort of was getting well, fairly the torturing the girl it. yeah you know instead of well I was thinking about that moment and I was thinking what would have been perfect right there was some sort of yeah you're getting a hit man but he's gonna do something that would mean something to an eleven year old girl. A 12 year old girl like that yeah. they'd be like oh you can't tell my friends that as he's you know creeping through her diary oh is this what you think about janie well I'll tell you what i'm gonna take this page and janie's gonna find out or you're yeah. gonna you know like i mean you could you could do a lot that is both frightening but not like just so what the hell like i mean how dark yeah. is this gonna go yeah yeah Katie yeah, want no, us to I expand of, the baby test. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was like, it's like, it was my first reaction. Um, okay. Um, here we're, boy, just a sec here. Wow. We've got a lot of activity in the chat, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Something, and this is just going to dive into Eric and Shashank's uh, combo. Uh, Shashank, you've probably gotten this before, but have you considered naming your, name your channel Shashank Redemption? Just a thought. That is, I don't know. See what Shashank hey. says. Shashank, that's a great idea. The film is very close to his heart. Plus, it's the first review on his channel. <laughs> to quote, to quote Troy on uh, Community, are you guys having little side adventures? <laughs> You know what? That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, you know what? Uh, Jelly Duck just share, sharing some hosts on Twitch. Uh, are you my? You are my one Twitch watcher, aren't you? Right now, Jelly Duck. Uh, thank you very much for that, um, Eric. Uh, yeah, yeah. Eric saw his first video. Just and I, I'm I'm now I'm now a, a little ashamed. Bravo, Mister Thorpe. I'm a little ashamed. I did not even. How could we not have thought of that, Jim? Yeah, well, I, yeah. <laughs> I think somebody else referred to him as Shawshank the other day, just on on one of our uh, oh. chats with a, a with a guest. But uh, yeah, okay. Um, all right, uh, all right. Upside down agrees with us on the magic for the most part though maybe there will be a sequel where the kid either hires another hitman or or and or going himself <clears throat> well well you know we'll talk like talk about that kid again which is going back to like there's i just think we lost something in the edit it's only 100 minutes mm -hmm. um which could be great you know a lot of good comedies are hey that's we've run out of jokes you know um but uh all right. Um, oh, everyone's starting to think Shashank, the Shashank redemption, you know, is, is the way to go. All right. And Vlad is saying Raging Rudolph is on YouTube. I got it. All right. Marked down already. I'm going to watch it after. Fantastic. All right. Uh, okay. The upside. I thought he was going to kill the girl or family too. I, yeah. I was like, wow, that kid deserved coal though. <laughs> yes. But are, are we talking about the the little the boy the the hitman hire who was about to bump off his grandma yeah i think uh or uh or the little girl who c committed the sin of winning a <laughs> winning a science fair how dare that little girl think she can get into stem <laughs> yeah no kidding all right Topical. Uh, yeah but i uh, we're with you <laughs> yeah yep Oh yeah, bunch of love for a uh, bunch of love for uh, community, good. and then one more vote. <laughs> Apparently, we've decided to name your channel Shashank. You know what, Shashank? You and it's you, real. You, you can, there's no cry. Like it's literally his name. They can yeah. say, "Why did you name it this?" Well, it's my yeah. name. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> the case rests. At the same time, you do whatever you want with your channel, Shashank. You be you. <laughs> 
All right. Um, coming back to the back to the subject at hand. What? Um, yeah, if you were going to change anything, Jim, like what would you have done? What would you have? <clears throat> like, you, this is a flawed. You know, you can yeah. say it, it just says too many flaws. It's failed. But yeah, what would you have done? Like, you know, <clears throat> afterwards I was I was sort of looking around and and I I. I you know, it was wry in certain parts. I don't. I don't know that I laughed out loud. You know, once, uh, maybe, maybe one time. I, I, I can't recall. You know, it, not that it was bad or da you know overly dour or anything like no. that. Um, but I, I, I just think that um, I don't know. Just something to do with the energy, perhaps. You know, one of the things is you know he comes back from having delivered presents. And um, he'd been shot just in the course of his duties. You know, I guess he went to the wrong neighborhood. As or, one would expect. Or or it could be that, you know, you'd stand your ground in Texas or, or what have you. But, um, and, and they don't really explain it. You know, maybe maybe they you could have a scene detailing that. You know, like the Walton Goggins. And he mentions this too. He says... You think you're the first one that's tried to bring me down? <laughs> like, oh, yikes! <laughs> this is such a great line. <laughs> and 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 it and it it's like a good song or a good novel. It hints at other stuff. Yes, right. Um, it's very it's an evocative line. You're like, oh, what else is going on? But yeah. uh, so I, I, you know, I'm always a fan of adding a little more. Maybe another ten minutes. Who knows? That could have been a set piece of some sort. Um, yeah, I, I, it was, it, there was an ingredient that was missing. It could have just been, uh, that sense of energy, I think. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, Walton Goggins was already kind of out of, out of control. Uh, he takes out the whole U S army apparently. Uh, and so it would be hard to have two competing, you know, atomic bombs going off in, in one movie, you know what I mean? So. Uh, yeah, I, it, that's a it's a good question, but it's a hard call. I, 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 it just needed something, maybe a backstory or a flashback or well, something like that. I was about to say, as you're talking, did Walton Goggins? Did you need less of the little boy? Maybe literally just the beginning, like yeah. the, the 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 guy lit the match. Mm -hmm. All right, now off to my regular day, and then you see him at the at the end. No yeah. science or, or no science here. Just Cole. See him doing something petty to the help. Yeah. And Cole, like you could have ditched that whole storyline, and replaced it with a a backstory for Walton, mm -hmm. like a backstory yeah. kind of a um, you know, so you understand his motivation. Although. It you show us enough of that and he almost has to be redeemed at the end. Well, you know, like, yeah. I mean, you know, al although there's, again, there's some really nice little like honest moments. And I think be not just the writing, not just the direction, but the performance that they're like, yeah, I can't replace parents kid. I, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That know, was, that's, I mean, like, that was, I, you got me a little in the feels, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that sort of leads into one of the points I was that that, that I sort of thought about as the movie ended. It was that you know, yeah, you're you're responsible for your own actions. There's something yeah. sort of on a deeper philosophical level here. But both the bad guys, the the child that hires the hitman to kill Santa Claus, and the hitman himself, they had both like there was a kind of an interesting. Uh, no country for old men scene when Walton Goggins walks up to a child with a who was playing with an airplane, yeah. and he says, "This is what I got for Christmas," and he shows cigarette burns on his arm. Yeah, <laughs> like that's kind of not his fault that he turned out so bad, you know. Well, this is why <laughs> you, know? you almost then, like need a little. You and know. the same, the same thing with the 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 um, the kid, uh, you know, the rich kid, Billy. He was obviously neglected by his father with his new girlfriend. They didn't talk about a mom at all. And grandma was a and piece of work. Grandma. Be a winner. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. and, I'm surprised and, the kid waited this long to try and bump her off. 
I, I don't want to make this take an even darker turn, but whenever you read about any kind of serial killer or bad dude or anything like that, it generally starts in the family home, right? You know what I mean? So, so these were two people that had been either abused or neglected. And I'm not saying that, oh, you know, yeah, them, you know what? Abusers are created, not born. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are absolutely a long history of that. Um, so, so in a way, the the message is sort of, and, and you know, you choose your own path. But there's still the message about the two antagonists is sucks to be you, <laughs> you know, or sucks to have had your childhood. Oh well. well now, mind you, know, you it, though, that's part of part of Santa's character arc. Mm -hmm. Damn it! I'm gonna end up liking this movie more. <laughs> when the show started, <laughs> you into it. but you look at Santa's character arc. Part of it is that he's been kind of into himself. At the, at the end, he's going to be more proactive, and then he f freaks the little boy out, which I'm totally okay with. I was comfortable with that. Yeah, you know, um, and maybe that's it. That he's like kind of going, well, this is where when I'm not proactive, we get. Walton Goggins. Walton yeah. Goggins is where that little boy is gonna go. Yeah, Richie, Richie, whatever, whatever the hell his name was. So maybe that's what they're thinking. Why they had to give the little boy more time, but it, like it shouldn't take me this long to make that connection. It should yeah. be visceral in the movie, not us, because no one. Like I mean, other than us and the and 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 our fellow nerdy movie weirdos no one else is going to be talking about this movie or giving it a second thought after they've yeah. watched it. Yeah. You know, so it needed to be more in there. Um, I, I got speaking of that. I just made it real quick uh, when I was taking notes during the, the movie. Uh, I just had a, I had sort of a right wing checklist <laughs> as soon as they railed against participation trophies. I thought, Oh, here we go. A Mel Gibson production. So but participation trophies, bad. globalism, <laughs> Blaming youth, uh, loss of tradition. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's definitely there. But then there is also kind of a, you know, a criticism not of globalism, but of. Uh, I, I, I'm not calling this class analysis. It's barely that. But yeah. A critic, a slight criticism of consumerism, like the one who's saying, "Hey, you know, uh, we like your cheer. It cranks up sales." <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. It's like, which is a really sort of dark, you know, little moment from the government. Uh, yeah. And also the, you know what, very American. Um, the, uh, how do you, how do you provide economic stimulus in a normal year for things you like, but you can't just give a grant to? In the United States, that mechanism is the, is their defense department. Mm -hmm. That's why, uh, so many defense contracts are spread all over Hell's Half Acre. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, we can talk about its legitimacy or illegitimacy separate from that is a way the United States provides economic benefits to states uh, and strategic economic benefits. It's not just, hey, we got a contract. It's usually high-end manufacture, usually mm -hmm. unionized employees, you know, like there's a lot of positives in a community that go with making weaponry, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. defense department, procurement, procurement, yeah, sure. let's call it that. Um, let's get back to the chat for a second. First of all, Kaiser 886, good to see you, man. Um, and then <laughs> Katie, Kaiser! 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 Yeah, because I'm thinking the, the Highlands. The Highlands. All right, uh, the Upside Down. I think there should, be, should have been more dark comedy. The mm -hmm. comedy more came from the premise, not really any scenes or lines in it yeah there's a couple comic moments but yeah it wasn't it was not packed full of jokes yeah and before i forget too i mean they had there was seeds of things that we were ta talking about lines that they didn't sort of uh um i guess go further on but the um 
there was one scene in the stables when the two government uh, agents come to talk to him, uh, and the yeah. and they and they're kind of being a little bit smarmy. And he, and he well, looks one at the, was being smarmy. Yeah, and he looks the one at the who young, had a couple of touch and go years. Yeah, and he looks at him and he says, "Yeah, you've had a little bit of a not Just an easy touch time and of go it. for a couple of years." And that's a superpower. Like he knows everyone, and he knows everything about everyone. Yeah, and well, and and that they could have used something like that, you know. Uh, and, and then he says to the assassin, it's that shown. They, Almost in every scene, like he yeah. calls everyone by their name. Yeah. He like I guess they, you know like yeah. it's 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 used regularly, used in the bar. Yeah, you know like it's. Like, and the guy's going to cheat so on his wife. So why it and... comes to it? By the time it comes to the end scene, it's why it doesn't feel stupid. It's like you know when he calls out his name because we don't hear the assassin's yeah. name once yeah. until yeah. the end. Only yeah. Santa that... calls everyone by their name uh, as a. You know, like it, it's part of what makes him morally, it's his moral high ground. Yeah. You know, and that was a nice touch. I, I thought that yeah. was Jonathan Miller. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, or I just, think it was Jonathan Miller. Or it was yeah. a Christopher Miller. Something Miller. Yeah. You know what? Maybe uh, the Belmoral Street uh, uh -huh. research irregulars could uh, help us out here. <laughs> He's referred to as Skinny Man on IMDb. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I kind of, yeah, it's tough. Like they, it's, it's almost like they needed to, where they restrained themselves, they maybe should have went more and bigger and yeah. where, yeah, I don't know. Also the American military, again, if we cut them out, okay, the movie would have been shorter, but we would, what would we have lost in the narrative? Not a lot, which is why I think there's actually more on the cutting room floor. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, that it's like, wow, all I can think of, and maybe is some of them weren't as old as the guys guarding the elves. Yeah. That's, <laughs> like, which was just, geez. just, oh my goodness. What is this, the home guard? <laughs> you know, like a <laughs> bunch of guys with rakes or something, you know? <laughs> Hitting on Catherine Zeta-Jones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, do we... Like they seemed almost comically incompetent, and yeah. this is those moments where you're 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 getting out of the film, so you're starting to watch it. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not in it; you're watching it. And all I can think of is, you know, if there's a military out there that isn't, you know, like I mean, if there's a, a Western or a modern military, maybe that's the best way to put it, a modern military that is has a lot of experienced troopers everywhere. It's the American military. And I'm thinking it's like, there's no way this one rando can just roll in and plug them all. Like, yeah. it's like, it's that, that, just, that was a little some bit. of the most incompetent, but but not even comically incompetent. Yeah. It, you know, maybe then make them really just a bunch of scrubs or something like, yeah. give us something, not just were, like stormtrooper level yeah. bad shots. And, I've shot myself. There, there was that one scene where they're, you know, before the the final showdown, when they're crashing their bulldozers or whatever they're doing, they're yeah. dropping their forklift loads, and, and, and I think that implies that can't do a can't yeah. nail oh, them. Yeah, yeah. Like, but what the why? <laughs> Take some pride in your work. Uh, yeah. So that I think that goes to show that these aren't elite soldiers. Uh, Walt Walton Goggins, uh, the skinny man character, yeah, doesn't have a lot to worry about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, but but even then, like he's kind of presented as the competent man. Yes. Yeah. So give him real obstacles that show his competence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like if they were a stronger than or so incompetent that he's expecting a big fight, and it's like, oh, you're all morons. Like, yeah. You know, like like he's almost insulted that his professionalism is not being challenged or you know his, his skills yeah. aren't being challenged one or the other but this is like no we got this killing force and these boobs and it doesn't feel like he's being challenged like you're just kind of going well here's a scene we didn't need you yeah. know yeah. but you're absolutely right jim that's a great point about the yeah that get out of this you can't nail a hammer eh, eh, 
I'm surprised yeah. he wasn't beating himself on that. <laughs> I know. It's almost like the, the, what is it, the middle cat class twits from Monty Python yeah. or something? Like, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, listen, here's, uh, we're going to, uh, I, I jumped ahead a little. Uh, okay. Sheshank's got a, a, a recommend, actually. <laughs> Speaking of dark comedy, he suggested, and I actually have this in my uh, Facebook. Uh, we, we message back and forth, but he's recommending uh, check out the dark comedy thriller, and and had done, 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 and had and had done, and had done. You you know what? Yeah. One of these I've spewed out eight pronunciations. Probably got it somewhere. One of them might have been right. <laughs> Uh, you'll have to confirm. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, you know what? We'll put it on the list. It's not really part of our Christmas theme, as opposed to Fat Man and Die Hard, <laughs> but we will put it on the list. Look we'll at also, it in, uh, in the new year. Where Rob and I do uh, figure out a um, few weeks ahead of time, and there, it's always subject to change if something timely comes up. But uh, so we've got sort of <clears throat> some in the docket for Christmas, but New Year's coming up, and uh, you know, and thanks COVID's for that. COVID's not going anywhere, so uh, yeah. not in North America at least. So, and it's uh, been a while since we've done three, like three idiots, and yeah. kind of jonesing for a bit of uh, I I Indian cinema. So, yeah. And anyone else who thinks there's a, there's a movie Jim and I should be looking at and bringing our particular brand of over analysis to, chime in in the chat now. Somewhere over, <laughs> you know where it is, uh, or down in uh, down in the. Uh, down in the comments afterwards okay um yeah uh upside dan thinks uh thinks it's a good idea um and then uh okay here he's commenting on the film on the, the uh, fat man we're talking about there were a couple of funny things but not as much as expected mm -hmm. yeah like they it's almost like they jammed in a lot of the gags well we saw him in the trailer yeah you know um i and sometimes fat like so the kid gets the call he has his then he runs out like he didn't know how to run before like he suddenly lost the ability to use his legs and he's fat man and then there's a moment at his desk and it's like well pick one of those scenes yeah. like you could have done and and yeah i gotta admit like i mean it made a great trailer move fat man yeah uh but it, it could have been great at the desk with him in his power pose and everything. Pick one. Yeah. Should have shaved, could have shaved some minutes and given us something else. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Shashank. Um, it's great. Oh, okay. They're going back and forth about uh, Ada Dunn. Ada Dunn. Um, <laughs> he killed them all. Yes, he did. Oh. Jim pronounced it correctly. There we go. Let's do it again, Jim. And had, oh, where is it now? And had hoon. And had, and had hoon. I think so, yeah. All right. I, I, I just guessing. Not <laughs> yeah, well, but Shashank. Well, you see, Rob, I've been to <laughs> India, and uh, in the time Yes, I... you have. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, okay. Back to the movie. Because we are talking about them. We do have a movie we're talking about. Back to overanalyzing. Now about mis <laughs> military distribution channels. Anyway. <laughs> Was there anything that, like, I, I again, I, like, I'm, I'm thinking about budget. And I'm, because mm. there's Walton Goggins on Christmas Day. Somehow managed to, guy goes, oh, I want to see the grandkids. Well, why'd you open? But, well, I'm paying you. Yeah, why'd you open up the shop anyway, you ding-dong? But Walton Goggins is doing, like, something. It's not even out of... He's in the gun range. He's doing that combat gun range run-through. Yeah. And, of course, it's not even a riff on John Wick. It's a riff on Keanu Reeves training for john wick and the the training people that did it um you know put this stuff up on youtube you know reeves oh, yeah. is obviously yeah sure you know what you know and so all of a sudden this company has put a couple of his speed runs these combat speed runs 
it's, it's also with their women trainers, you know, because, yeah, so they're all, uh, it's part of their stunt team and everything. And all I'm thinking is like, wow, you, everyone was like, I'm going to come with my fit a game because Keanu Reeves, like it's, it's like three incredibly, you know, it's, it's kind of hilarious to watch it as Keanu Reeves just does his Keanu thing, but he's going through it and you see, yeah, that's a guy who's physically fit for it. And mm-hmm. so you watch Walton Goggins, like somebody's going to be doing a, a, a side by side kind of going, yeah, Walton, you, you're not pulling it off. You look like a guy your age. You know, doing yeah. your best in a low budget movie where they did not have the time that, you know, Keanu can commit six months to learn that particular thing, yeah. you know, yeah. with a, with a daily trainer, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, 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 there was, uh, and I'm like, yeah, you, you didn't need to do that. Didn't need to spend that money. It wasn't the, even if you needed the gag where he'd rather be at the range on Christmas day. And just have them on the range. Yeah. That could have yeah. easily been done. That run through. And that that's what I mean about because that still costs money. Like mm-hmm. that's actually a bit of a set piece. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's like, you didn't need to do that. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, especially because it never pays off in the movie. He never does that John Wick, you know, around corners, blah, 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 blah. It's more he's sitting in one place or he's picking them off from a distance. Yeah. You don't get that scene. So why why have training for that? Like, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I guess they're just showing how and serious And why did is. they show us that when we know there's stuff that we should have seen? It's it's that reinforcement of the competent man, uh, I, 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 I would guess, you yeah. know, uh, but... Uh, yeah, I, well, it could my, even be the star going, oh, I look cool in that. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, no. I mean, he, he plays in Justified. He plays, and it's been years since I watched it, and I only watched the first couple seasons before other things. You know, even great series, sometimes you, you never catch up with them. And, um, uh, you know, he, he plays a bit of a flaky career criminal in that. He's sort mm-hmm. of like, he's the coyote to... To, to meet the elephant's roadrunner kind of and he's sort of constantly you know in trouble and almost like a rockford files character as well gotcha. um and so in this one i guess you know he's actually knows what he's doing you know and that's yep. that's you know not playing against type necessarily but just a, a, another a version of of a, a criminal this one ha- who has his act together he re- you know, it's funny, before the movie, when I was writing down the things I was expecting, I was expecting, though, that, yeah, it'd be a bit of the Walton Goggins from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. he's maybe <clears throat> not as, and we didn't get all of that, but I felt that criminal there was actually quite competent. Mm-hmm. He was foiled by those kids but not because he was an idiot like he mm-hmm. actually was up until the end of the movie he is the, he's a great bad guy in that he always seems to even when he, he okay he got screwed there but he's able to get the drop on or like he he was an effective villain in that and entertaining and relaxed mm-hmm. casual like I mean, he only loses his cool a couple of times and loses it well and i thought we saw a fair bit of that in this and that that was was kind of what i was expecting you know um yeah. you know oh yes. yes he was great memory dan he was the bad guy in the new tomb raider too you know and another yeah like i mean a guy under tension but not an idiot the guy's got 91 IMDb credits, so he's he's been all over the stuff. Like, I always forget that he's in Ant-Man. It's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah and a great role in the Ant-Man on the Wasp. Yeah. Like, really, one of my favorite parts of that movie. Mm-hmm. Damn, I love that movie. Love them both. They're like, they're not for everybody, but they're in, if I was to do a ranking, um, a la Sean Chandler talks about, or, you know, some of my fellow uh, YouTube, it, it, that those would be high up in the MCU, higher than some others that everyone else puts at top. Let me tell you that. Yeah. Um, so, I, I don't know, Jim. Like, a, what are we missing about this movie? 
are, are we missing are we asking the like, wrong question of it here, here's a question and i've been sort of had this in my holster for a little bit is that uh how far do you have to go to have steered away from the comedy and just made this a dark movie like a dark oh. serious and, and you know i'm joking about the gritty reboot but the gritty reboot like, like a what, real what would you have to do just to sort of and and you know on the 360 degree you know circle would it be that main degrees that you'd have to change it to make it just totally serious and dark and i, and I would think you wouldn't have to change I, it much you know this is what i would okay thinking out loud that's a great question and it, it chime in guys like yeah uh right when you ask that question be like okay ditch the kid make it all about walton goggins and maybe you even make santa the out and out villain mm -hmm. of the police um and then because here's a mo so you make it about walton goggins you give the origin story so you understand his motivation and you kind of think it's awful but you kind of get it mm -hmm. you know um make him a mel gibson a payback mel gibson which i was kind of expecting this film to see as well kind of did kind of didn't you know his yeah. ability to take a beating we saw that that payback mel gibson in this movie um but yeah you make it about walton goggins you make it about getting revenge over like and, and we've seen that movie before but you really go into the heart of it because it is kind of it brings up a in all these wonderful christmas movies no one talks about you know a, abused children like people children who've gone through awful you know um mm -hmm. your typical christmas movie brings the family together in the spirit of christmas and and finds a new parent for the kid and does this and does that and it's like it's all pretty vanilla yeah um so that dark ruby you start with that then and here because there was a moment where i thought oh my goodness are they gonna make that kind of twist you don't think I got this job by being jolly and nice. You can have that moment. You get yeah. to that point. You're following him. You're following Santa. You're seeing Santa's just a bitter old bastard. Um, and he's unwilling to change. Walton, as he meets maybe other kids, because he's, you know, and then he's like, maybe he's starting to go, now I got to go through that. And then he kills them. And old Marianne goes, well, okay. Uh, well, anyway. It's your gig now what do you mean in the power of christmas and that's in yeah. a way that's his curse but also his redemption it's like mm -hmm. all right you know what uh i wasn't i'm not surprised hey i get to retire now you know what i'm a widow i don't know go find your own wife i don't come with the job you know yeah. like <laughs> uh but but i think that could be gritty and dark but still a christmas movie an honest yeah. god one where yeah. it's like hey you know Maybe you could do it better. He was losing his touch. Maybe a time, like him and Marianne, like him and Mrs. Claus, the Widow Claus. <laughs> the Widow Claus. There you go. Damn, here. that's like a, I'm on fire. Yeah, um, you're neck deep in this already. You have, you can have a moment at the end where you're going, you know, there was a time he got way more active, got way more involved. Now, actually, we can bring back the little kid who set the, set the the psh, the the fuse fuse yeah and then he goes and he's like oh so did you do it yeah i did it here it is now i'm gonna tell you little billy uh there's a new santa in town and i'm gonna fucking watch you <laughs> like yeah. you can have a a real moment where you know like that so that it's the santa finds the christmas spirit in a whole new santa <laughs> who is a you know a murderous assassin <laughs> there you go there's the gritty reboot yes yeah yeah <laughs> all right no sounds good <laughs> all right everybody what do work. you think of that crazy reboot? get to work on it <laughs> all right uh the There's... upside down i also wish santa knew about him being on his way earlier or he got to the north polar yeah you're right like it is it was like the last act mm. and as he's driving through canada you know and it's like 
Even the, I like that he liked his hamster. And then the weird woman, you're a reptile person. You're a snake person. It's like, let the guy have his hamster. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, you know, um, but yeah, like it was like the American military thing. Like it just in yeah, a way yeah. it didn't. Well, it, it's taking up too much time without any payoff. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to lend into the, well, okay. It is a Christmas movie. So the spirit of Christmas, which Santa has to recover, that is certainly one of the themes. Yeah. Um, what else? What else are the themes of this movie? What's this movie about? You know, what's it about? Mm. And that's that, not just for you, Jim. Like, uh, yeah. although I'm asking you first, uh, you don't want to hear in the chat. I want to hear in the chat. I want to hear in the chat. <laughs> I, I think there's a little aspect of it. It's, it's not really spelled out too much, though, that, that you know, the, this, is his, this is sort of an internal job for him. And it's not going to be the, you know, it's not going to be the same every year. So I think there's a little bit of a that that weariness. Like, mm -hmm. how can you do a job for eternity, you know, and be totally committed all the time? I think that there's a little bit of a, uh, uh, an issue, uh, work burnout. So, yeah, almost. Um, uh, but yeah, redemption. Um, I was sort of hoping that it wouldn't be about saving Christmas. It, it, nobody actually, thank God said the words save Christmas, but it kind of was about it. Um, well, maybe uh, not saving yeah. Christmas, but Santa re, re rediscovering the Christmas spirit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, Which uh, I, yeah. I do. I, I, it sounds like I'm being nitpicky I don't, and I don't mean to. I, no, no, I, I know think what you it's mean. subtly different, but yeah, still yeah. different. You know? Yeah. But how many, how many of these, oh. these movies have we watched that they're like, Oh, we got to save Christmas. Oh, Santa's and, and you know what, Jim, missing. you're, you are right. Cause one of the elves was, uh, one of the elves said literally oh we know what this is about santa christmas is on the line i mean he was number seven was saying that about the doing the uh american military contract but yeah. <laughs> okay now i'm finding it funny <laughs> it's yeah. like, no we gotta we gotta do this deal <laughs> two thumbs up from rome <laughs> well it's just so kind of insane like yeah. this is it could have been such an like a balls out crazy like it, and it's not just Mad Max that I'm thinking of, but yeah. I, I, like not just because it's Mel Gibson, but yeah. I am thinking of Mad Max Fury Road and just it, it, like you and I saw that in the theater, you know, in the before yeah. times, yeah. And yeah. it was like I, it still runs like that was just bonkers, just fire and so, tornadoes and awesome guitar players and bonkers flames. Yeah. You know, I, I, it just occurred to me now, actually, and I probably should have thought of this earlier. When when you go to a movie like, and there's been very few times, you know, usually it's that confirmation bias. You go to what you think you'll like, unless that it's sold out. Mm -hmm. But generally, you, you like the movies that you want to like, or you think you'll like. Uh, but there's been very few times, like with Fury Road, where you just, just go to the movie and you, you come out of it just saying... That's bananas, and I, and I can think of <laughs> just a real quick one, just a real yeah. quick list, and so this won't be comprehensive, but I can think of about three Wait, titles. I'm gonna hold you on your list sure. for a quick sec, because I think it's a time I I, I have not shamelessly uh -oh. begged for begged for attention. So before Jim gets to his list of bonkers of bananas films, um, and how it relates to this film. I, I gotta, I gotta beg for the like, folks. If we could get a thumbs up, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And what do you do when you subscribe? <laughs> Ring that bell. <laughs> All right, Jim, you're, you're, and and you know what? Actually, while you're going off your three bananas movies, sure. uh, folks, you folks uh, in the chat. Put, put your thinking cap on. What are your three? Like, wow, that's just so crazy. Mm -hmm. Just what's your what's your top three or even your top one banana banana movies? Just yeah. so nuts. Okay, Jim, go. So, Yuri Road uh, easily is up there. Yeah. 
uh, uh, the Fly, when that came out oh. with Jeff Goldblum, like all those years ago, it is yeah. the only movie that I've ever experienced where strangers in the men's washroom were talking to each other at the urinals. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> generally that's not a thing that you do mm. in Canada anyway. And everybody was at, at the urinal going, holy cow, that was insane. So... <laughs> And where you just like, I can't believe I just saw that. So that's one. Fury Road, The Fly. And and so just thinking about it now, I think it was anywhere. There was a period of time when the Farrelly brothers put out movies and you would just, I, you would say to yourself, I can't believe they wrote that line oh. slash made that joke. I think yeah. me, myself, Irene was one of them. And, and it was just like... Was that the one with Jim Carrey and Renee Zellweger? I think. Yeah. And and it was just maybe not a classic, but just where you're just laughing so hard, and and some of the lines are so just crazy that that you just think, how did they get that past the censors? How did they get that? <laughs> That's I could I could reference a few, but it might turn off some of our uh, our, our. There was one with speaking of urinals, Jim Carrey going to the washroom, and I just I just lost it in the theater. Like where you're just uncontrollably laughing for five minutes. So, um, you, I, with the with the codicil that I don't normally find washroom humor particularly funny. Anyway, having said that, but so those are those are some examples where you just where it's more than just liking a movie. You just go, holy crackers! That was that was an experience. Just nuts. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm trying to think of my own kind of veer towards comedy and in in as much about the premise i i i gotta put on that list jim dumb and dumber oh, not yeah. so much that i really loved it i'd be lying to say i did um mm -hmm. i what i admit though is it's now that's commitment to a bit yeah they basically had one joke and they stretch it out so long that the more you heard it the the more familiarity right you mm -hmm. just after, near the end, the bit starts to work on you. Yeah. And by the end, you're laughing in spite of yourself. Yeah. So I think that's one of those ones where they just committed to the bit and they just went yeah. crazy with it. It was like, we will hold nothing back. And I, I'd always <laughs> love performances where you know they're just, which we're giving it all. Yeah. Another reason on the, why this is kind of a flawed, but could have been such a good movie, the, uh, Mel, I'd say, left nothing on the table. He Which was one's not right? Mel Gibson in this movie. Oh, yeah. Left nothing on the table. Oh, like yeah, he, yeah. He committed to it. And 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 it shows in every scene. You're not at no at, at no time is this a does it look like a paycheck flick to him? Even though I, I really suspect it was a paycheck flick to him. Yeah. Um, you know, um uh I think beyond that, like I mean you've got I I, I had to check out, well, it's, you know, me and th that kind of movie. It's rare that I get through it all. I didn't see uh, The Fly in theaters. Okay. And so by the end of it, I was like, or by, so I, I rented it and I was like, you know, back in the day when it was still a wired remote, click. Oh, look, it's got an eject button. <laughs> VHS pops out into the Addy's case off to the uh or maybe it was an Addis, wherever the, yeah. the 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 neighborhood store you know it went well, back just, so just i couldn't the, watch it oh yeah. yeah just the commitment to his i mean speaking of commitment I, yeah. and i guess what that's maybe what it is in in those cases it's the fury the fury road it's commitment to just yeah. the its own weird vision um something like the fly cronenberg's commitment just having Jeff Goldblum's body literally fall apart mm -hmm. in front of you and yeah. still maintain some sort of character with the fly robotics or, or what, yeah. whatever. Animatronic, um, whatever. Animatronic, the yeah. Tree and I, sh I should add to that list, and again, not so much the whole movie, but one scene uh, from The Exorcist 3, <laughs> which my wife and I saw before she was my wife, I believe. Uh, there was one scene... Where, where it was one of the scariest scenes I've ever seen in my life. And uh, I was not able to, because somebody comes up from behind someone, 
I was unable to vacuum for probably three months after that because I was so so weirded out. I had to I had to I had my head on a swivel. But anyway, okay. Uh, but it, yeah, so I guess it would be in this case. It's just it's it's like not just commitment, but like commitment plus. Like yeah. it's just that all in uh, and more. yeah. The, and and this is and maybe what that's one of the problems with the movie like i mean again it, it's like it's pulling a punch somewhere so it, it doesn't land all the way that's a good um, that's actually a really good phrase yeah pulling yeah. its punch a bit yeah. yeah all right we got a few comments and then we got some other folks lists and i want to want to get into this but first of all um katie katie fowler chimes in and says imagine they didn't have mad max monies I, you know what? And I agree with you. They certainly didn't have Fury Road money. <clears throat> God. <Yeah. laughs> but I think they had original Mad Max dough. Um, and you look at Mad Max and there's a bonkers, another bonkers film uh, that they did on a shoestring. So oh. mind yeah. you, though, Mel Gibson was not a no, well, like he wasn't a, a big star. I suspect they broke a lot of laws, probably nowhere near a union. So, you know, um, never mind. I'm going to take that back, Katie. You're just 100% correct. They didn't have it. But then, you, you know what? Actually, I will say that you find a way to go over the top within your budget, you know? Uh, and I like the way they did it. They kept it in one location, you know, for yeah. the most part. Uh, again, they could have ditched a ton of his driving up there why <laughs> you know i did i did sort of like the driving sequence where it just sort of cut and he was listening to different music that was kind of a neat little uh yeah little bit but I had to go to the washroom by the by the side of the road <laughs> the yeah, coca cola yeah. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> the terrible eating habits uh okay um uh Shashank. like the moment the notification comes on when we're talking about I think when like, we're talking subscribe. about it. Yeah. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, Katie, she on her bananas movies. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Holy smokes. What do you think, Jim? Uh I've seen parts of it. I don't think like on TV. I don't I, that's one I obviously should should watch. Uh, Maybe we should put it on our list cuz I haven't as, seen it either. I, as I was watching, do this, we I, put it on our January list? Yeah, do sure. we put it on our January list as a way to talk about tourism? Johnny Depp. <laughs> uh, well, it's in Vegas. Is yes. this a way to explore Las Vegas? Oh, because we could, you can't uh, get, go there. We could get Cody on to give us pointers <laughs> could, or something. We could, and perhaps Miss Fowler might have something to say on that. Anyway, yes, yeah. Uh, so we got Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Uh, okay, who else? Okay, Shashank. Banana, banana movies, Fight Club, The Big Lebowski, and American Psycho. Yeah, there is a film that committed. Yeah, you know, like. Yeah, and all three of them did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a pretty solid list. Oh, The Upside Dan. And now this, I'm, I'm respecting this. I, I, I'm going to put this on my list because I think I, I agree with them completely. Not the greatest movie, but Sausage Party with the end. I, I, I don't know why the Sausage Party got the mean on it did. I thought it was kind of crazy and fun. What did you what did you think, Jim? I haven't seen it actually. That was uh oh, okay. a spousal veto. So ah. <laughs> it's, just, it's something I'm gonna have to watch on my own without the kids around and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So well, you know what? Maybe when again, post post COVID. Maybe maybe the two theaters will be left and you know, yeah. figure out how to check it out or something. Okay. Um all right. What do we what else do we got? Uh upside down. Wait, there are wired remotes? Yes, they were. That was early days. Early, early days. Well, I my date myself. I remember my mother got uh, one of the first Betamaxes, top loader Betamax with the wired remote. Like it was a, like I mean, I'm sure it was north of a thousand bucks. Oh yeah. In the would that have been 1980? And like, movies were a hundred. 
Yeah. Yeah. You just, like, you, you know, own it. Wasn't yeah. a lot of rental options at all. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it was being sold pretty much as an appliance to record television, to mm -hmm. watch later, had a fancy, fancy, almost impossible to adjust timer, you know? Yeah. Okay. That's not what anyone wanted to hear, but there you go. There you go. The upside down little history lessons for me. Where are you from? Your uncle Rob. Um, maybe I'll just keep growing this beer. Then I can be that crusty old Santa. Um, all right. Uh, Ooh. Ahmed agrees with you. Exorcist three. And, uh, what well, uh, jelly duck are you inferring? Cause I remember the first exorcist. Heck, I remember Damien. Remember mm -hmm. the Omen? Yeah. Well, the second one, I was old enough to see it, to lie and go see it in the theater. And it still kind of creeps me out. Yeah. You know? No, they, yeah. They Oops. were sinister. Yep. They had something um, going on there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, look at this. <laughs> Somebody, I got another viewer. Apparently says I can be famous if I just click this Russian <laughs> domain What's with the website. <laughs> Are they Czech or something? <laughs> yeah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, okay, the upside down. The upside down. Scary scene. Which scene are you referring to, Dan? Uh, uh, I think the exercise. The vacuum. Yeah. The, the, the reference to not, never going, <laughs> not vacuuming for a while. Yeah, it's, um, it's it's an attack, and yeah, so okay. Yeah, um, he's also super well done. In the driving sequence. Yes, yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Ooh, here's a here's another good one from Katie. A Clockwork Orange. Yeah. I might have mentioned it here before, but uh, I was in the uh, Broadway Starbucks on a crappy Monday in April a few years back. And yep, okay. uh gentleman walks in and it's Malcolm McDowell. And I, I he nobody was here else shooting a movie. It. He was, shooting I was working two, in the office at the time. Yeah. Two back to back movies. I think one was a Black Christmas thing and one was a Home Alone part seven or something. He, just, he was conveniently here yeah. when they and were he, getting another production up and he running. walks in, this guy that I've watched all my life he was in Blue Thunder. Come on. And, and he walks in and nobody notices. And and he gets in line behind me and I turn around and I, I pre-COVID, I put out my hand. I say, welcome to Winnipeg. He, he, he regards my hand for a second. He goes, oh, yeah, thank you. And I say, welcome to Winnipeg. Have a great stay. Are you filming something here? He goes, yes, yeah, we had a few uh, bad Christmas and this and that. I said, okay, well, take care. I didn't want any autographs, no selfies. I think he was worried, but it was, it, I came out of there and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I was kind of fangirling all <laughs> all the way down, uh, all the way you. down Broadway. Yeah. Good for you. Um, okay. Um, is uh so clockwork orange absolutely great banana movie but i'm gonna actually now I, another one i want to add and i think it goes in the bananas category um mm. even though it, it is a little more of a class like i mean it's, it's it's a pretty straightforward narrative film and everything but aliens mm. not mm -hmm. um aliens because it just it flipped a genre it went from uh from Hor sci-fi horror to war horror it was a war movie a sci-fi war movie it was a vietnam movie yeah. um when vietnam movies were coming thick and fast and really good ones and this was like you know what we're gonna skip the politics and we're gonna give them what exactly what they want and that was kind of bananas mm -hmm. it was a bananas mm -hmm. flick yeah, uh, yeah once it got going like it's slow burn and then it's full on even when they're taking a breather and having a bit of peace you're just your your heart is still at that high rate and then next scene brrr, oh good i'm glad i didn't relax too much i i would just come back here anyway yeah um yeah. okay uh jelly duck oh absolutely ahmed yep i will and i'll i'll, I'll fix that later I, I just find it entertaining with these want to be famous with all the nonsense <laughs> 
just think it's worth it's worth pointing out <laughs> somebody's yes. putting in the effort um okay uh upside dan agrees with uh agrees with exorcist three um oh katie uh giving you a shout out for mr mcdowell all right shashank mm -hmm. oh and i see a butt here this will be entertaining Aliens is a great fame, great film, but I would say even Alien is pretty bananas. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, oh, you only saw it a couple months ago. It is, it's it's intense. It's an awesome. You know what? I have not seen it in years. Jim, you saw it, I'm assuming, eh? Sorry, my light just went out. Yeah. I think I lost my battery. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I've seen. I think I saw that. That was a nice little touch. <laughs> um perfect timing <laughs> yes exactly um yeah no it's, they're in the ship they're in the house uh oh yeah spunk meyer spunk meyer and then it's like i didn't see the first one in the the theater i saw this uh i saw aliens in the theater and that that was that was good i saw the first the alien, alien. i remember this so i'm a cadet mm -hmm. Royal Canadian Sea Cadets, for those of you, uh, you know, not sure what I'm referring to. It's kind of a, well, like a lot of cadet programs across the world. Um, and of course, this prairie boy joined the Sea Cadets. And you got to go to Comox, BC, and for uh, British Columbia on the coast of, well, actually, on the coast of Vancouver Island, mm -hmm. further west of British Columbia proper. Um, you go to Comox and there was a, um, you know, every two weeks, you're, you're there for two weeks, so two weeks of camp, really military camp, but camp. Uh, and, uh, they did a showing of, of it in one of the big, uh, uh, not in the parade square, but one of the big warehouse kind of indoor things. They, they presented it as a, as a night thing at the end, near the end of your cool. time out there and scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes me think, though, on my bananas list as far as horror, The Evil Dead. I actually made someone walk me home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, and that's bananas. The Comox. Evil Dead is bananas. Comox is a pretty decent place to go as oh, a kid, though. Beautiful. It, it, yeah, oh, it's yeah. beautiful. I should say um, to, to Katie, uh, I also, downtown uh, Winnipeg, we can make this a whole topic one day, but I, I held the door open. She was filming with Guy Madden at the time, but I held Isabella? the door open for Isabella Rossellini, yes. <laughs> Which I probably mentioned before. <laughs> Great. I think I've got a t-shirt. No, made. no, we could have a, we could have like a whole thing of, yeah. <laughs> you know what, maybe for Cinema Sidebar, we have a, and, and here we have Jim's Brushes with Fame corner. <laughs> <laughs> I held the door open for. <laughs> okay, Katie Fowler, Donnie Darko. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, that's a solid choice. <laughs> Jelly Duck, Banana Licious. <laughs> okay shashank uh all right not that much into horror haven't seen any horror film barring alien psycho and the silence of the lambs and that's an interesting one because that's like you know is it horror or is it a psychological thriller you know yeah we'll have to come back to that i think yeah. uh but a good entry-level horror film okay everybody what, what's a good entry level and what's or maybe a great starter horror yeah. you know um that's a great question Shashank, i you know what jim what what do you think of what's what's a good horror one i've got you know i i don't know if my kids liked it as much they played the changeling here at cinematech a couple halloweens ago uh cinematech's the local art house theater with that, that shows sort of uh you know older movies or documentaries and that sort of thing um and uh, the changeling not the angelina jolie movie but the the george c scott movie from 79 i think shot in vancouver takes place in vancouver i think and it's about a uh, a haunted mansion a composer moves into a haunted mansion and and george c scott smokes every second of the movie almost he's always like is that some kind of ghost anyway um but uh creepiest like, wheelchair ever yeah and it's it's i mean some of the logics kind of you know now that i'm so an creepy old jaded man is, is watching it again but it's it's 
it's got kind of a, a you know, a, a, it's got a, it's, I would say it's hearts in the right place. That's not quite the phrase that I'm looking for, but it's, it, it's genuinely creepy and it's, yeah. it's dark and it's filmed in either the, probably the fall, I guess. So everything's dingy and wet. Well, it's Vancouver. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's so I, changeling. Yeah. The changeling is <laughs> kind of a, a, yeah, it's a slow burn kind of a, a, a neat older, older movie, but uh, that George C. Scott's always kind of fun to watch. All right. Uh, anyone in the chat got a recommend for, uh, for, for, uh, for our man, for our man, Shashank, for a man in Chennai. Um, what about movies we've watched, Jim? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, okay. I'm not, there's zombie. So the, the, I mean, horror is such a massive, it's like, oh, it's a crime movie. Well, Heist is a crime movie. So is Knives Out. So is Murder on the Orient Express, right? So mm -hmm. horror is such a big genre. I think uh, of uh, uh, Shashank, for me, one of the horrors I can still kind of get into are zombie movies. One we saw this year, if you haven't had a chance to see it, but we saw it as part of the show, was Blood Quantum. Great film. Um, great. Uh, and, and Canadian. Canadian. You know, like it, it, not just Canadian made, but a Canadian film, a Canadian indigenous film. Um, uh, you know, that would be one. But of course, uh, Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, not Zack Snyder's right wing remake, um, but uh, the original George Romero one. That was my entryway. Me and my buddies loved it when I was in high school. Like early '80s, this first time I saw it. A good renter, so yeah. Actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Dawn of the Dead, George Romero classic. Yeah. Yes. That there's my recommend. That's you know, I'm gonna. One. I'm gonna think about one at about 2 a.m. today. I'm gonna be like, oh, there's another one. But uh... okay, so we've got uh, got a couple more. Uh, so Sheshank on his bananas list. He thought Parasite and Old Boy. Yeah, Old Boy was bananas. Yes, yeah. Bananas. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great, great, uh, great, great contribs. Um, okay. Uh, oh, Katie. Katie's coming in. Wait a second here. Uh, where? Oh, there we are. Okay, Katie. Katie held the door open for Brad Pitt in LA. No <laughs> joke. Don't tell Richard. <laughs> you know what? We're going to sell this. Okay. We're. You, everyone else, you feel free to chime in, but I'm going to say to both Katie and Rich uh, and uh, Katie and Peter, Katie and Jim, who the hell's Peter, Katie and Jim, you're now going to keep all these anecdotes to yourself and we'll have an anecdote off. Sure. An anecdote off next month when we all get together to, you know, perhaps do a tourism related film, mm -hmm. perhaps fear and loathing. It <laughs> doesn't hold up. Okay, uh, back to the uh, chat. Oh, that's a great, Katie's got a great suggestion. Wow. So the Upside upside Dan, he's going to think about it. He figures kind of a scaredy cat. I'm with you on that, Upside Dan. Like most of the time, I do not, I don't do those movies well. Um, Shashank's going to check out your suggestion, Jim. Katie, this is a great one. Awesome one. Yeah. I still have memories of a couple of the episodes creep show creep show and creep show two i'd say is creep show two what was the one because they did a couple and then one was like oh this is terrible this is like yeah, maybe awful was, maybe but was, the first creep show yeah solid it was fairly, fairly well received if i remember yeah. yeah and and just a solid solid anecdotal horror yeah. okay yeah. uh keep moving out oh Upside Den, better watch out. Underrated yeah, Christmas horror film. It's not really scary. Krampus is a good horror Christmas comedy. There's some, some solid uh, suggestions. Um, Shashank's uh, digging that. And then digging that out with spell check. Um, oh, see what Richard, uh, one of our Belmoral Street research irregulars. Um, Beginner horror would start with classics. Amityville horror, The Exorcist, Rosemary's Baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
great calls. Uh, the Evil Dead, because The Evil Dead, Evil Dead. You know, uh, yeah, you got to have a Raimi flick on here. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, that's a solid list, Richard. Uh, Exorcist is a little bit like just Shawshank. Prepare yourself. It's it's <laughs> yeah. It's a ride. It's great. In, in yes, yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, the upside down. The train to Busan, Korean yes. zombie horror. Ah, there that's fantastic. Oh, you know I have not seen it yet, uh, but it, you know based on this favorite. One of his favorites, if not favorite, zombie horror movie. I, I got it. I, it is. It's on my watch list, and on my honest watch list, not yeah. on my. I should see that, but uh, no, I really want to watch that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's got a kind of a crazy, great, almost like a comic booky kind of energy to it, and yeah. just roll, just goes. Yeah, a good solid zombie flick. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh my goodness. Based on it's a zombie film based on a video game. They made a million. Resident Evil. Oh, really? The first one is good. I I really like the first one. Um, <laughs> you know the twelfth or whatever, whatever number it's on now. Less so. Okay, uh, boy, it's a great question, Shashank. It's just everyone's like kind of okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, oh. We'll watch it this weekend. Uh, Train to Busan. Yeah. Uh, if, if it was a contest, the Upside Dan wins it. Okay. Ahmed is uh, it figures uh, figures the same thing. Awesome. Um, oh. <laughs> Creep Show Two. Thanks for the ride, lady. Yes. Is that the set? This is not a recommend. No, no he's quoting a, a oh. bit out of it. Like it's. It's just not a good movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Upside Down agrees with Richard. Um, Shashank, uh, wanting to watch the uh, saying to Richard, wanting to watch the Exorcist for a long time. Um, Shashank, thanks for all the recommendations, guys. And Katie, you know what? Uh, not only did she had a couple of solid ones, uh, also, uh, yes. We're all here. <laughs> the gang. <laughs> Let me nag everyone on gender issues. Because that's what you hear want to hear from a 53-year-old white guy. <laughs> that's my role. <laughs> okay. Um, Amityville Horror. Ooh, all right. Here's a... Wasn't even okay in this movie. I thought it was based on a true story. That's That whole Amityville Horror scam has been like not not the movie was the movie is a very good horror movie mm -hmm. but you know it was almost like jim remember like that came out the book came out allegedly based on a true story create written by con artists mm -hmm. and then but it was also the same time the time life effed in the head series books with the crazy nazca lines and you know all that yeah crazy crap that was actually Spontaneous getting into theaters and, yeah because i remember seeing some of that nonsense in real theaters at garden city yeah nagging yeah. my poor mother for garden for the city. money to take the bus to yeah. get out there to watch shit <laughs> sorry okay Ooh, the vanishing yeah yeah oh what's another one it can't can't be quite the others nicole kidman yes. oh such a good psychological Christopher horror yeah. yeah and and yeah. a psychological horror and and a and a great ending like a just mm. it pays off like what could have really been an awful film pays off and yeah. just you know like oh just yes yeah like it and one of the last films that like uh, Tom Cruise produced that with his, you know, Paula Wagner, the team. And oh. that was right when uh, Cruise and uh, Nicole Kidman were going through a divorce. And it was like, well, hey, you, you ended off well, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Great movie. Um, also explains the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're yeah, right, others... Kate. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No, no. You, uh, you go first. 
Others? No, it, that that's a great suggestion. Uh, and further to, to what uh, uh, Katie's saying, uh, the, it's interesting when you see horror elements in other movies. For instance, Peter Jackson started out as a horror movie director, and there's moments of horror all throughout Lord of the yeah. Rings and The Hobbit. And and uh, yes. it, oh, and even King Kong had some of yes. his early creepy, like gross out body mm. like well not body not cronenberg body but definitely yeah. creepy monsters uh but also beautiful creatures yes yeah it's not a horror film but it came mm. to me when you're talking about michael jackson and yeah. it had some peter creepy fantastic peter jackson thank you <laughs> <laughs> okay um okay next uh all right shashank that was the first R-rated film his dad saw in the theaters, and he has not let me see it. Uh, says it's a very disturbing movie and messes with your mind. Which film are we talking about? I think about, he is talking about The Exorcist because that comment came up just yeah. when we were chatching about gotcha. that. Gotcha. Okay. Nice um, just uh, correct if, uh, if, if we're not wrong, we're assuming it's The Exorcist you're referring to. And yeah, I could see why. <laughs> yeah, don't think you would have brought that home when your kids were 15. Kids, this is a famous, this is a important film for you to be aware of. Oh, excuse me. Okay, um, Upside Down. Now, these are great horror movies, but I wouldn't say Entry. The Conjuring 1 and 2. Insidious 1 and 2. Three is pretty good, and four isn't that bad either. It's interesting. This is the same guy I was talking about what a Freddy cat is. And then he's like, "All right, you got to look at this, and don't Here's forget a that one." Here's a comprehensive list yeah. of every single horror. Movie. <laughs> yeah, getting down. Some of the top, like some of the top recent horrors. You know. Um, okay, uh, Jelly Duck. The others. He remembers that. Uh, now here, here's one. You know, the uh, Dan, I agree with you. The four scream entry, especially the first couple. But there's something that actually somehow managed to maintain uh, some quality as it was redoing itself. But but definitely the first. But I would say, Shashank, watch. You got to watch a couple slasher films. You you know the Halloweens. The you know like you you, you need. The, the best way to appreciate a Scream movie is having some familiarity with the tropes, the iconography, the, you know, like immerse yourself in some of these others and then set that for later. Almost when you're sick of watching horror movies, then you watch Scream and you go, oh yeah, it is funny. You know, what do you think, Jim? You, you buy and yeah. my recommend oh, yeah. on yeah, Dan's they, recommend? Yeah, yeah, I know that, that those are good ones. Um, you know, the, when you get into the, you know, four movies, sort of the quality goes up and down. I remember when the first one came out that everyone was like, whoa, this is kind of different. But yeah, uh, I would also add Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods. Um, yeah. I would also. <laughs> um, uh, well, I got a lot of opinions. I'm like Dan. I got a lot of uh, opinions about horror films for a guy who doesn't like horror films. Never watched one in my life, but here are my top 100. Um, the the witch, uh, fairly recently the, the made. The witch, solid, solid movie. Um, oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, interesting. No one's brought up, and I'm not. I'm not encouraging people to, but no one's brought up Midsommar. Um, I want to watch it. I haven't yet, uh, yeah. but okay. I, I, I am interested in it. All right. Here's uh, Shashank. The moment when the crew lands on Skull Island has its touches of horror. Now, are you referring to my Peter Jackson? I, I think so. Uh, yeah. King Kong reference. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, but even as they're going in the island, there was like these worm things that were eating people. It was just like, well, I still remember the, the image is there. And I'm reading a book. I'm going to talk about it in the next episode, actually, because I, I, I think it's something everyone should everyone should buy. And not just because I might have an affiliate link in the description below. Uh, but I'm going to talk about a book I just, I'm just just about finished called uh, uh, The Storytelling Animal. I'll talk about it next week. Uh, but it's relevant to this. Con it's kind of relevant to this conversation, too. So let's remember this, folks. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Vlad, chiming in. The Exorcist is truly 
disturbing yes. as opposed to being just scary. Yeah, you bet. Mm -hmm. Even with the tubular bell soundtrack, you're right. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep. Shashank Cat is referring to The Exorcist. Uh, still love horror, even though I scare easy. <laughs> Good one. All right. Uh, Shashank, sorry for hijacking the conversation about Fat Man. Uh, I think we're pretty <laughs> much done with Fat Man. This is all good. Yeah. This is all good, man. Uh, but we are going to get to last thoughts. We're going to take, uh, okay, Jelly Duck's got to head off. So let's say, uh, let's give a wave to Jelly Duck. Jelly Duck, thanks for coming in. Uh, do your thing. And we got to plan an Among Us game together and maybe include some of our regulars because I would love to do that. And you know, AOC. So we're going to plan. We're going to plan that. We don't, we don't need AOC and Jagmeet in, in our thing. Let's let's have some fun. Um, <laughs> Je Jelly Duck had reach, it put out a, ma a tweet, you know, hey, anybody up for this? And it was like, well, it was two hours ago and I got shit to do now. Uh, anyway. Okay. Yes, we will take care of. Uh, yes. Okay. So before we get to final thoughts, uh, the upside down. Yeah, Shay Shay. Watch slasher films, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. I know what you did last summer, the first one. Cabin in the Woods, yes. The Witch, yes. All right, now we're, we are. We're starting to circle around the same. We're all just now agreeing with each other's recommends. Okay, uh, all right. Um, Peter's King Kong is too long. Uh, yeah. It's not a perfect film. Uh, seriously, the original is over in running time before Kong even shows. <laughs> and I have a big problem about, <laughs> I have a big problem with uh, depictions of wind chill on top of the Empire State Building in the middle of winter. Anyway. Come on. Her that movie's heart. unrealistic. That movie about the giant <laughs> ape is not a realistic movie. Who climbs up a building. <laughs> uh okay uh all right so yeah uh while uh so jim i mm -hmm. think it's time uh to hand it to you um why don't you tell us what what uh here i'm gonna bring the I'll bring the christmas music down a little sure which i hope and if anyone if i'm cranking up the tunes a little too loud feel free to chime in in the chat that they gotta come down a little uh but uh this is about as far down as they are going to go. It's still Christmas. Um, <laughs> Jim, why don't you tell us, what are we... Okay, this may be a redo, but what are we watching next week? Well, we are heading back to Germany, and uh, we're taking a look at... Ignore that title. Christmas Crossfire, a fairly new entry on Netflix. So, yes, it came out price on is Friday. Right. Yes, the, yeah. The price is right, and it is a Netflix original. Yeah, uh, sorry, folks. I know we had already announced this last week. We had to change. Uh, we're going to have our special guests, Yana Shinmara from uh, uh, coming in from Darmstadt, just outside of Frankfurt, Germany, to help us analyze this film. Especially, you know, some of these ones where it's a we got kind of a cultural thing. It's always it's always great to have people from that from from uh from where the film's made to talk about it with us uh so uh fortunately they couldn't make it today watch why well, we kind of did a last minute change but uh they've uh yeah they're gonna be on next week so we'll be doing that at 10 a.m central standard time that's utc uh utc universal coordinated time minus six uh so not uh 10 a.m on sunday you know plan a brunch you know what? This is what we all got to do. We gotta, we're gonna agree to brunch together as we talk about this. Uh, what looks to be kind of a bonkers Christmas, German Christmas movie. Yes. Apparently, a lot of violence. We're not really a family family operation, are we, Jim? No, not so <laughs> much. More blood in the snow. You yes. know what? We're Canadian, which makes me wonder why, Jim. Why? Why have we not made we Canadians? not made any of these films is black christmas is that a canadian production it or what is it? yeah it, what the original black christmas is a canadian i film. haven't seen it but uh yeah um yeah yeah hmm. yeah and and yeah you'd say canada did you know kind of kick off a couple uh porkies one of the original teen sex mm -hmm. comedies uh you know 
not not saying that was a great genre. It's not necessarily a genre to be proud of, but nope. it was it was it was a it was it was the one that said told to Hollywood, oh, you make money, pandering to fourteen year old boys. <laughs> Count us in. Yes, yes. We'll sign up to that. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, Jim. What? Uh, and this is uh, for for everyone. Um, oh my goodness! Just check out the restream wow. message. Like holy doodles. Um, we we uh, we got an award. What? We got a well. Look at the re restream. It says I've received a hundred messages today with restream chat. Oh wow! I, I haven't seen that yet. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Before we get to the chat, Jim, any um, any final thoughts on uh, Fat Man? Let's yeah, wrap up Fat Man. I mean, if if you have a Jonesing to watch uh, uh, Mel Gibson again, he's actually pretty good in this. The oh. movie's not great. It's not horrible. I mean, if if you have a 90 or 100 minutes to kill and you want to watch something different it's it's not bad uh but uh you know you can always watch alistair sims uh, 1951 christmas carol or scrooge i believe it's called uh mm -hmm. but you know that that's my own choice but uh yeah, yeah it, it's not bad but it's it's maybe not as uh not as good as it could have been yeah I, Jim, I agree with you completely. That would be my take on it, folks. Is it, is it worth your time? I can't, I can't mm. see it's worth your time. Yeah. Uh, but if you're into film, like really into film or film stuff, you know what? It's sometimes these flawed ones are great to watch to kind of figure out, okay, what, why doesn't this story work? What is going on here that, that kind of mucks it up? And so I, I, I can say for those folks, a limited, a narrow recommendation. And you're right, Jim, like some of the, it, it does, it has some highlights. So if you do end up, you got nothing better to do and you just yeah. feel like killing, it's only a hundred minutes. It's yeah. not two hours. It's barely an hour and a half after you factor in credits. Mm. You know, you won't be like totally resentful you know just be aware of what you're getting into yeah not a, a christmas classic although who knows some of these things they end up being cult favorites mm -hmm. years later like like i still think the hebrew hammer is an awesome film and there's a reason not everyone's talking about the hebrew hammer um all right yeah. let's yeah. uh let's wrap up our uh chat stuff before we wrap wrap it up uh but this has been another great episode yeah uh, so well, first of all vlad uh Say, you know, well said, Jim. And that's correct. Uh, I'm assuming Thank we're you. talking about. Uh, I think that was King Kong. Back I think he was talking about. Yeah, no, no. It's, <laughs> um, oh, uh, here, Shashank, though, he's, he's, uh, he agrees, but he, he loves King Kong. Seen the hundred times. Hundred times easy. Wow. Wow. That's Maybe commitment. we need to revisit. <laughs> Okay, uh, Shashank sh Love, yeah, restream, yeah, wow, 100 messages, folks, we've received 100 messages, that's on all of us, yeah. yes, <laughs> okay, oh, right, all right, uh, Shashank, before we wrap up, what are both of your and the chat's favorite Christmas movie, Home you know Alone what? Die Hard, you know what, let's, let's put that on next week, because we're still exactly. in Christmas mode, yeah, we yeah. Will, that will be, that's a question for everyone to come back next week and maybe we'll, our german we'll friends would have crazy. some different answers too because they that's they're a, you know that's a great idea mm -hmm. great question shashank we'll put it on next week uh now vlad oh this is you're right actually uh vlad netflix from germany the new oktoberfest crime series yeah kind of a what is that pinky I think, I think it's yeah I, I, well no not the oktoberfest one I'm, I'm not set in munich but it reminds me of that pinky blinders or peaky, oh, blinders. peaky blinders thank you okay um okay the upside dan i am not gonna dan this is not a diss i want you to save those answers come back with them next week on the christmas question um seen it are we in the spoilers <laughs> I think she's talking about uh, the German movie, Christmas. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. 
we are not in the spoiler zone yet, Katie. No. It's we are not because Jim and I haven't seen it. Don't spoil well, it for I us. I haven't. Yeah. It's okay if we spoil it for others, but <laughs> absolutely please respect so the, we're not. No, I'm yeah. Just yeah. Respect us. You less so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't. Uh, but yes, uh, Katie, that's because you're a keener. Katie, I believe, is the kind of woman the teacher is always when she's looking at kids to, you know, some teachers are like, all right, who am I going to catch not doing their homework? And they're scanning and they're like, oh, you're squirming, you're squirming. And she would like literally skip over. Uh, yeah, no, no, she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> not catching her on anything. <laughs> okay. Um, upside down. He is saying um, on Black Christmas don't watch the 2019 one original is great 2006 isn't as bad as people make it out to be um all right shashank it was you know what though guys you make it an excellent podcast yeah it was great uh, you know what it's it's your chat that just really does bring the whole thing alive um mm -hmm. skipping all the chat about a movie that relates to christmas that we can talk more about next week um <laughs> okay um upside down who has seen this film pretty much agree with your guys consensus although since i love physical media i like it enough probably to buy it buy it on blu-ray <laughs> well and we're gonna look for that blu-ray haul video and what you think of it would love to know actually and I, i'm i'm not being facetious here love to know if there's any commentary and uh, Dan, if if you do get it and the commentary does address some of the stuff we talk about, maybe we have you on the show for a kind of redux where maybe we talk about that or something. Okay, um, everybody. Um, wow, what an awesome show. Yeah. Uh, thank you all so, so much. Thank you. Yeah, Dan, Shashank, Jelly Duck, uh, Katie, Richard, Vlad, Kaiser. Although I don't think he once mentioned how handsome we are, especially me and all my Christmas finery. Yes. Um, you know what? Uh, who, who, who am I? I, I got to be missing oh. a lot of people. We say In Vlad, Richard, Katie, Upside Dan. Uh, men mentioned Ahmed. Uh, we got Jelly Duck. Uh, we got Richard. We've, uh, no, there's somebody I'm missing. And uh, for whatever reason, well, I'm an old man. Oh, can't, can't miss your shirt. One, two, three, six. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I am. He was up earlier, probably had to jet. Not everyone can. Uh, Eric know, Thorpe. Not everyone's... Eric, yes. Eric yes. Thorpe. From and uh, our friend uh, from uh, Shashank and Upside Down, a number of people's, uh, are, are the class I've been taking, uh, uh, the course I took in uh, in getting better at YouTube. Oh, uh, yes. Our friend from Lost in the Real. So uh, thank you all so very, very much. If I've forgotten someone, uh, punish me in the comments down below. Uh, please, again, one more, one more beg for a like, one more beg for a subscription. And of course, please ring the bell. Okay, everybody, uh, let me, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's, I think I'm ready to cue the, uh, cue the outro. Jim, sure. you'll kind of hang out in the green room. Maybe we'll have a I beer will. after and alrighty, my friend, I'm going to take right. you off. And then I'm going to, uh, say, yeah, once again, they, you guys, you guys do, you, you help make the show as amazing it is thank you all very much for coming and we will see you next week remember 10 a.m uh 10 a.m central standard time utc offset minus six um yeah i think uh i think it's time to to roll out bye I've been in your world.